Hello and welcome to the Okefenokee Heritage Center. As part of our middle name, it's Heritage, and one of the things that we're going to begin to work on as a project is oral history. And we're delighted today that we have one of our members with us who is Mrs. Nancy King, and we very much appreciate her time and her willingness to do this. And I've known her for a good little while, and I consider her a friend. And it would be awfully hard for me to address her all this time as Ms. King. And so I will call her Nancy. So Nancy, thank you so very much for your time today. Thank you for asking. Now, tell me your family name, your maiden name. I was a, a Wood. And what's your whole name besides Nancy? Nancy Carolyn Wood. Is any of that family names? You got a great aunt or anybody named after that? Not that I know of. Just, Not your parents just liked it? Okay. Were you born in the hospital or were you born at home? I was born at home in Yukon, Florida. Okay. And uh, Where is Yukon, Florida? Well, it's where the Naval Air Station is on out Roosevelt Boulevard. My daddy was in World War I, and uh, when he got out of service, would you believe he was an airplane mechanic? And uh, he served in England with uh, Eddie Rickenbacker. Really? And uh, when he got out of service, he came to, he was from Douglas, Georgia, but then he came to Jacksonville and bought a service station and there wasn't very many cars on the road in 1918, 1920, but that's what he did there. On, it was 17, and uh, it's Roosevelt Boulevard today, and he had a chicken farm there, and uh, everything was going good, and then the war was coming, and they wanted my daddy's property, and he, they bought that, and that's where they built the, really? naval, the naval Air Station. Really? And we moved to Callahan then. He found some chicken houses. Now, not chicken houses like they have today, but uh, each house would have maybe 200 to 300 chickens in it. And uh, so we got to Callahan, and there was about 20, I'll say, houses, chicken houses. And so we were there happily until here come the war. And uh, some of my adventures, of course, I was born in 1935, okay. and so I was just five years old when we moved to Callahan, and then the war started a year later. And well, what was his name? Daniel Session Wood. And what was your mother's name? Ruth Ellen Connolly. Where were they born? Daddy was born in Bickley. Really? And then moved on to Douglas. Mm -hmm. But there's a story about when Daddy was a year and a half years old, they were moving, he was a sharecropper, and they were moving to Pearson, to a Dr. Smith's farm. And as he was taking a load of furniture through the woods to, to Pearson, lightning struck a tree and it fell and killed him and the mule. Really? Left my grandmother with six children. And you know, Dr. Smith, though, was such a gentleman and a nice man. He took that family in, and those older boys were not even teenagers, mm -hmm. but they did what they could with him, and, and but he uh, took care of that lady until really? then she moved on to Douglas and took him sewing, and that's what her and the two older girls did. Well, tell me a little bit more about your childhood there. You said, talking about your five years old. What was your childhood like as you grew up from there and on into oh, teenager years? We had a ball in, in Callahan. We had a horse, and we the, took a sled with the feet on it and went from chicken house to chicken house and to run and catch up with the sled and ride on it for a while. Uh, it was fun. But some of my stories... I knew that the war was serious. We wasn't scared or anything like that, but we all gathered up around the uh, daddy in the evening to listen to the news. And we knew what all was going on. But then, you know, we'd go to the movie in Jacksonville and there was movie tone news. So we saw the war, we, we knew it. 
but it was such a blessing to see a, hear an airplane and look up. We wasn't scared. We knew that it was friendly. You were safe. And then these children, and uh, but to sing those songs and say the land of the free and the brave, yeah. it it registered with us. We'll fix it. We had to black out the curtains. We had blackout curtains, and uh, then we painted the top half of the car lights. And us being at Callahan, I mean, we had people uh, some use of u-boats whatever come up yeah. and, and bury stuff on Fernandina Beach really? and so it it got close to us and uh but we bought war bonds and uh to tell you how different today is than then we was like the our grammar school was like four blocks from the uh the grammar school and we would bring our money in and whoever brought in the most money, the stamps were 10 cents a piece, they got to walk to the post office to buy the stamps. And uh, we we just, I, I don't remember what grade, probably third grade, but I mean, I walked that four blocks to that post office and the school let you go, you know, we was, mm -hmm. that was... <clears throat> right by yourself. Right by myself. All but right. What happened one day though, we, we, the health department was just one block down and it was on the main uh, US-1 and by my name being W, I was the last one to get my shot. And uh, so the teacher came to me and told me, said, now Nancy, we're going on and as soon as you get your shot, you come on back to the school. And I was waiting and as I got, had just got my shot, the second, the next grade was there and they said, Nancy said, you're late. He said, the bus is already coming, everything, and you're gone. And I, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I just happened to look out, and there was my daddy across the street at the grocery store. So I just go down there. And that good like that's what you were supposed to do. Yes, and then, of course, everybody was looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, those things happen once in a while. Yep. One of the things you might mention is which war that was. Oh, you know, I, I just realized we didn't say which war it was. Um, this was World War II. World War II, okay. Daddy was in World War I, and um, then this was the Second World War. And everybody was, all the able-bodied men were at, in war. And uh, us with those, all those chickens and everything to take care of, that was probably the biggest problem. Of course, I was too young to, uh, I, I didn't have to work. But the people that would come to work would be uh, old and maybe have a disability or something. And everybody did their part in that. We saved Greece, we saved Ten four, we say well, we didn't have ten four back then, but it was ten cans. And uh, in the one world. of the things I wanted to, uh, that you told me about one day when we were talking was um, about the depression and people coming by their home. Yeah, that was Yukon, and the railroad track was not too far from Daddy's property. Well, it probably was on the edge of the property, and. The men, and, and mostly it was men, would come in, but they'd be from Ohio, Kentucky, anywhere up the road, up the country. And they were trying to go to Miami. For some reason, they thought Miami had jobs. Mm -hmm. And they would stop and want to know if we had any cardboard or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm telling this as if I was there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but this is what Mama and Daddy would tell me. that, uh, But... We had a pack house and whatnot, and, and he would tell them they could spend the night in there if they did. And if it was Sunday, Sunday morning, they would go to church with them mm -hmm. and would teach, and teach Sunday school. Daddy said they were doctors and lawyers, said they was very well-educated people that was walking that railroad track. To Just trying to find a home, trying to get away from the, all the depression aspects of it in life trying to find somewhere to, to find some food. Mm -hmm. And so mom and them would always cook extra and they'd keep a pot of soup. 
really? going for just for that. Just for that, because I mean it yeah. was daily. Yeah. Yeah. Do you did you farm? Yeah, Mama I did you, it. Yeah, I know you live out there on a, on a farm area now. But did you farm in it? Not after we come to the Waycross. Uh, Daddy was always in business. Of course, Daddy was always in business, yeah. but Mama did the farming at Callahan. I mean, she had the garden. She kept, okay. the, kept the cows and whatnot. And her and my grandmother sewed and uh, kept us in clothes. And Were most of your clothes homemade? Yes. And then with those ration books that I told you that I we have, uh, <laughs> my, my older brother's, they, we couldn't keep them in the shoes. And so they would get all the coupons and, <laughs> and I wouldn't get as many and I'd be kind of jealous of that. And, uh, but we'd go to Jacksonville every Saturday. And uh, in 1950, 1940, I get my years mixed up. <clears throat> Daddy bought a new car, and uh, it was a Chevrolet. And it was, a, we, mother loved her car. And then when the war come, and you just, they didn't make cars anymore, somebody come along and offered Daddy a deal that he <laughs> didn't turn out. That was Daddy, he, he was a horse trader. And uh, he sold Mama's car. Oh, was she upset. And now Ruth said, we'll get you uh, another car. And he found a 1930 Graham Page that the doors opened out this way. And uh, it, it drove pretty good, but one of the windows wasn't, didn't roll up tight. But it didn't, the brakes wouldn't hold. One time they'd hold and then the next time he wouldn't. And, but we'd go to Jacksonville and that anyway. thing anyway. And here we'd be going down the street and the light would turn red and Mama just turned the corner. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have seat belts back then, and we ended up knowing just to hold on. All right. Well, it works. You're still here, getting along with it. Yeah, it was, like I say, I had a delightful childhood. It was, uh, we were entertained. We went to the movies a lot since we went from Jacksonville. But then even in Waycroft, we had the movies here. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. What did you do as a teenager? Well, we had gotten on to Waycross by then when I was, I went through the sixth grade at Callahan and then we moved when I was in the seventh grade. Daddy came to Waycross to open up the Kaiser Fraser business. There was no automobiles, and uh, but they were ahead of their time. And they're on Alice Street where the Pepsi-Cola company is now. That was Daddy's car dealership and uh, that was a good time to <laughs> to be alive. But you're talking about the tent shows? Yeah. After I was starting, I was dating and we was riding around one Sunday afternoon and uh, we just happened to be in Cogdale. The big and, city uh, of Cogdale. We saw this tent and I thought, what in the world is this at Cogdale? And it was a movie, would you believe? Yeah. And every so often they would come to Cogdale with a tent movie. You know, we, um, I reckon we were kind of on the cuff. You was asking about the funerals. Uh, I remember bringing the bodies home, but then right about that time, that was when they quit doing it. And uh, there were so many other things. We had good, uh, the people quit being born at home. They started being born in the hospital. And uh, technology and, began to take over. Yeah. And uh, some yeah, of it was good, some of it was bad. Where did you attend high school? You attended high school in Callahan? No, no, we moved when I was in the seventh grade. Okay, I'm sorry. And uh, I was the last graduating class from the junior high school downtown Waycross. And uh, they built my, tore my high school down, I mean my junior high down and built my quarries. And uh, 
All right, what, what was the neighborhood like when you were growing up? What, what were people like in, in your neighborhood then? We played in everybody's yard or backyard. We'd go out at night after supper and play hide and go seek and just run all through the Quarterman Street uh, Trinity Church area there. And DAR -D Park, where the walking trail is now with the YMCA, that was, they had a big building that was paved, and we went down there and roller skated. Really? And uh, we just, it was, it was fun. It was a safe, pleasant time. Most of the people in the neighborhood treated you nice, looked out for you. Oh, yeah. And, well, the, you know, you did something wrong, and they would tell your parents. Or they would correct you. You couldn't get say, away with it. Uh -uh. And uh, well, when did when did you think you were grown up? You know, I kept waiting for this veil of maturity to come down. It seemed like my mother could make snap decisions, and you ask her a question, she gave you an answer, and it was always a good answer. And I always wanted to. Well, if I went, if this happened, or if that happened, and I kept waiting for me to have that, just knowing what to say. And I'm not so sure that I'm grown up yet. <laughs> <laughs> you think that was just an acquired thing she had or something that uh, uh, was inside her that uh, she developed? And it was, but I believe that if she'd uh, had the education, she would have been a Rhodes Scholar. Yeah. I mean, she was a very smart lady. That, that was another thing I was going to ask you about your education. Did you go to college? I went to the off-campus center here in Georgia. Okay. Georgia put an off-campus center here in Wake Forest. Who were your role models or your mentors when you grew up? Who, who did you see that you wanted to be like? Well, it was according to what age I was. Now, when we were going to Jacksonville and eating at, at the Crystal there back when I was much smaller, much younger, I wanted to be flip one of those. He had a spatula that was this long, and he could put flip and flip that whole row at one time. And if I could have worked at Crystal, you thought that was great, eh? That was, and then I saw a, a soda fountain, and then that's what I wanted to be. And Daddy was just put his where Easy Way Gas Company was there on Plant Avenue. Ryle's Drugstore was right on the corner. And uh, so he was telling Daddy about that, said, yeah, Nancy wants to be a soda jerk. He said, well, I tell her to come down here and I'll show her that fountain. And put her to work. And so at 14, I worked one summer for him. Did you? Did you work anymore as a teenager? Oh, yeah, I had to work at Crescent's. I worked f at Friday afternoon and all day Saturday for $4.12. Did you do most of that when you were going through high school? Yeah, that was high school. Okay. And okay. Um, then it got to interfering with my basketball. What did you do in basketball? Uh, Berta Katkovac and Mickey, when they first came to Waycross, I played on the first basketball team that Berta coached, and that was seventh grade. And I played basketball till I was up in my 40s. Really? I played for the YMCA team, the Southern Bells, which was the telephone company, and I probably played ball and a half if I could stand up. So the joints would continue to work. Did you find anybody that, as you was growing up and, and got into adulthood, that you felt like was a, a good person, a good leader, a good individual that you wanted to be like? Well, I think my daddy probably had more influence on me than, than most people. And Daddy always told us, said, the only thing that you have is your name. Said, if you let your name go. Mm -hmm. Everything else goes. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you think that was the thing that your parents instilled in you the most was, was you know, your name and your values like that? Well, and uh, being a Christian, they, we were very... Uh, close with that part of our education and uh, but I think the, the war kind of had a, a, a thing on a, a 
can't, my words won't come right. sometime. No hurry. And, uh, but we knew that things were serious and that we had to, to walk. But we were for, very fortunate. We had chickens, we had eggs. Mother did a garden. She always had hogs and cows. And so we ate good. I mean, we, we didn't suffer anything like that. We had, and Folkestone had a meat locker, a freezer. And we would kill a cow, cow and have it wrapped and whatnot and then take it to Folkestone. But to this day, I can't figure out how many trips we went to Folkestone to get our meat <laughs> to eat. It don't matter. You had it to get to, didn't you? Did your grandparents hand you down any stories that you recall? Any family things that went on? Just, just uh, uh, happenings? Uncle somebody did or aunt somebody did or cousin Joe did? Well, my granddaddy was a well driller. He didn't, I'm not talking about little wells. He drilled city wells. And uh, he drilled like for the Duke University, the oh, Charlotte, yeah. North Carolina. And he drew big feet. And, and so I told you, my daddy put in a service station there on 17 there in Yukon. And when they were doing the Naval Air Station, and uh, the, there was a the Camp Johnson there already. And they started dr drilling wells then. And so my granddaddy came down to there to, to drill those wells. Mm -hmm. And that's when he brought my mama. <laughs> and that's her and daddy met. Okay. What was health care like whenever you were, uh, were growing up? Did you have a lot of home remedies? Did you take care of yourself? Or? Well, Dr. Ed Harrell, who was up from around Alma, Georgia, he was one of, he was daddy's cousins. And uh, his, his office was in Jacksonville, so Dr. Harrell took care of us. Did he? Did he? Okay, and, well that's good. So you didn't have any kind of old family remedies everybody went by. Where did you do your shopping? Where did you do your hair? Who did your hair for you as you were growing up? Oh, we had some of them home permanents. Home? <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> the first permanent I got, Mama wanted me to look like Shirley Temple. <laughs> and this was when the permanent waves was up here and they was electric. And the things hung down and they wrapped your hair on these. And I, you know, it'd be burning here and I'd move and it'd burn over there. And when she got through with me, I had all these, you ought to have seen me. Oh, but, I, bet, I bet you look good. One of the questions I was going to ask you that I missed was, how many siblings have you got? I had three brothers. Okay. Two older than, and one younger. All right. And are they still alive? No, we've lost everybody. I'm the only one. Really? Left. Okay. And uh, my mother lived to be 100. Really? And uh, her birthday was like in May, and but she fell in August and bruised this arm and then a blood clot moved and, Didn't recover from and she had a stroke. Mm -hmm. But I think she'd have been here yet because she, she was one feisty lady. Well, well, that's good. What was she? Well, you say she was feisty. What did she did that, that was that, that type of personality? Well, I mean, she she ran the farm. She ran the gas business. And whatever it was, she uh, was right there on top of it to do it. Okay. And she loved her cow. She loved her livestock. And just right on up till the, the very end. All right. How old were you when you got married? The, I was 20. And then okay. I had and you said, and your children? How many children have you got? I had three children, and we've lost one. Okay, and were they born, I did ask you, were they born at home or not? Oh, no, we were way across for the you hospital. The hospital. And I asked you about the funerals. Well, were most of the people, as you said, then they were going to the funeral home? They, that was just the, the time that kind of seemed like there'd be one would go up to the house, and then most of them, though, they just started go into the funeral home and they found that was so much easier. Aren't you said you was president of PTA then that meant you were active in, in the school organizations were you active in any civic organizations around town? I was the JC's 
and um, back then we called it the J6. Yeah. We were the the lady part of it, and um, I was always people. When you will work, they'll give you a job. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, about every thing that come along, I I was it. But uh, and then I was the eighth district president of the J sets and. Okay. Uh, well, you've been a busy lady. You've kept the house. You've raised children. You did civic things. You did PTA. You've kept yourself busy, and now you've, when you got older, you've been a member of the board here for years. You've served as a chairperson, vice chairperson, and probably how many times president of the art guild. And uh, how long have you been painting? I didn't start till uh, I was. It was late in life. What happened, I wanted a certain color painting in a bedroom I was redoing. Could not find it. So I thought, mm-hmm, I'll just buy some paint and I'll do an abstract. Some of mama come out in you. <laughs> but, and I found out that abstracts are hard to do. Mm -hmm. But I had all that paint left over and so I just kept dabbling and dabbling and dabbling. And, Cause it was something I had always wanted to do. I thought, oh, we would. I would go to all the art shows in Jacksonville and just admire. And oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. And uh, so I just kept trying and kept trying. And I'm not, I like to say I'm not an artist. <laughs> You're pretty good though. I'm just a painter with a, ambition. All right. But the Heritage Center. I mean, this is a blessed place. What's some of the things that are important things that you think life has taught you? Go slow. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main one. But, uh, you've got to put Christ first in your life. And you've got to depend on Him. I, that took me a while to, to, to realize that. But uh, as I get older, I know exactly where my help comes from. Okay, all right. What do uh, what you think that, uh, I've lost my chain of thought where I was <laughs> then. Okay, what are some of the important things that you like? So what are, what, are the, what are the values you think you've got in your life that uh, other than uh, Christ that uh, are very important to you, such as family values and that sort of thing? Well, you know, we have to help one another and to stick with family. That's the biggest thing that you've got is your your parents and your your siblings and whatnot. And uh, but there was one of the questions, and and my question, my thought on it was that I have decided that anybody, any parent that does not start their children with a biblical life is that's child abuse now if the child wants to leave later that that's fine but let them know about the bible the what they should do but you know when you take these children at, as a teenager and they don't know they've never heard uh that's sad they've lost a lot all right if your great great grandchild were to view this, what would you like to tell them? Do you have a great great grandchild right now? No, all I have is grandchildren, and it don't look like I'm ever going to have a great grandchild. All right, we've got a couple of generations down the road then that might come back and look at this. What would you like to tell them? That. Oh, <laughs> and I thought I had that all worked out. But this life is wonderful. This is a blessing. And uh, be a good neighbor and always treat everybody as you wanted to be treated yourself. And uh, just live by the Ten Commandments. Yeah, okay. Nancy, that's all I'm going to ask you. And thank you so very, very much for your time. And thank you for the information that you've shared with us. 
And uh, I hope everything will continue to be as wonderful as it has been for you in the past. Thank you again. Thank you, John.